Software development has made the world a better place to live in, all thanks to its rigorous and seamless development procedures. And testing is one of the core parts of these procedures. It's necessary because we all make mistakes. Some of those mistakes can turn into pretty expensive and dangerous ones. Imagine a scenario of a payment gateway with some error. If a customer makes a transaction using this malicious product, there is a huge possibility that he will be washed off his money and blame will directly go to the development firm. This is the reason why software testing is an increasingly important part of any development cycle. And with today's session, we are going to explore one aspect of that known as black box testing. But before we begin with this session, make sure to hit that bell icon to never miss any update from IntelliPath YouTube channel. First of all, let's look into the agenda for this session. We'll begin this session by understanding what is black box testing. Next, we'll look into the types of black box testing and how you can do it with step by step approach. Finally, we'll look into the advantages and disadvantages of black box testing. I hope I have made myself clear with the agenda. So without wasting any time, let's get started with first topic of this session. What is black box testing? Most of us perform black box testing every day. Whether we have learned or not, we all have performed black box testing many times in our day to day life. We can certainly deduce from the term that it refers to dealing with the system that you are testing as a mystery box. It indicates you don't know enough about the system's underlying workings but you know how it should act. When we test our vehicle or bike, for example, we always drive it to ensure that it does not behave abnormally. Haven't you done that? If you have done that, then yes, you have already performed black box testing. So let me formally define this term black box testing. It is basically a software testing approach that compares the input values with the output values and examines the functioning of a software application without looking into the underlying structure of application. The primary focus of black box testing is on the overall functionality of the system. Black box testing is often referred to as behavioral testing, but behavioral test design differs from black box test design. In behavioral testing, the use of internal information is not explicitly prohibited, although it is still discouraged. Each testing method has its own set of benefits and drawbacks. Some bugs cannot be found using only the black box or white box techniques and can be found during a blend of both. However, the majority of applications are tested using black box technique and we need to cover all possible test cases so that most of the bugs will get discovered by this test. The black box testing takes place at several phases of software development and testing life cycle, including unit, integration, system, acceptance and regression testing. In unit testing, the smallest part of an application is tested individually and independently. Whereas in case of integration testing, multiple individual units are tested together in tandem. Then we have system testing. In this particular test, multiple components of the system interact with each other to determine proper internal communication in software. Next up is acceptance testing. This quality assurance test determines to what extent an application meets end user's expectations. Finally, we have regression testing. This testing ensures that the application performs correctly once the code is updated or changed to resolve previous bugs. I hope these different testing levels are clear to you guys. Moving ahead, we'll discover different types of black box testing. Practically, there are several types of black box testing that are possible. But if we consider a major variant of it, then only two fundamental types stand out. The first one is functional testing and another one is non-functional testing. Let's look into the details of functional black box testing. This testing type is concerned with an application's functional requirements or specification. Different system activities or functionalities are evaluated here by giving input and comparing the actual output of the intended outcome. For example, when we test a drop down list, we click on it and see if it expands and displays all the anticipated parameters. There must be something that determines what is and what is not acceptable behavior. And this is specified in functional or requirement specification. This requirement specification is a document that specifies what a user is authorized to do so that he may determine the applications or systems adherence to it. 
Additionally, the actual business side circumstances may also need to be tested at a time. As a result, functionality testing is performed using two prominent techniques. Testing based on requirements and testing based on business scenarios. Testing based on requirements cover all of the functional specification that will serve as foundation for all tests. Whereas testing based on business scenarios contains information on how the system would be evaluated from a business process standpoint. Few major types of functional testing are smoke testing, sanity testing, integration testing, system testing and regression testing. Let's talk about non-functional testing. Basically, it is performed to validate the application's non-functional requirements such as performance, usability and so on. It determines whether or not the system's behavior meets the requirements. Furthermore, this testing also addresses all things that functional testing does not. Most of the time, clients are more aligned towards proper testing of functionalities. And if the functionally sound product goes live without non-functional testing, then there are huge chances that it will face performance challenges. And to refrain that from happening, non-functional testing has been included into the black box testing. The major types of non-functional testing includes usability testing, load testing, performance testing, compatibility testing, stress testing and scalability testing. Moving ahead, we'll try to contemplate how we can perform black box testing with a step by step approach. In general, when a systematic process is followed to test a software, quality is maintained throughout and is useful in the long run for further rounds of testing. So let's look into the standard step by step approach. The first step is to comprehend and software's requirement specification. This SRS should be well documented. In the second step, you'll formulate your test cases with the help of boundary value analysis and equivalence partitioning. The boundary value analysis is done to make sure that when inputs close to the high and low limits are provided, the product does not behave abruptly. Whereas equivalence partitioning is used to divide input values of the application into different classes or groups based on similarity in outcome. In the next step, you'll execute those design test cases to check if they pass or fail by comparing the actual results with the expected results. Next phase is about raising failed test cases as defects or bugs and addressing them to the development team to get those defects resolved. After all the bugs are fixed, testers will again recompile the software product and test it again rigorously to verify if the defects are recurring or not. This is also known as regression testing. I hope this process of doing black box testing is clear to all of you guys. Finally, we'll discover the advantages and disadvantages of black box testing. First of all, let's look into the advantages. The first advantage we have is that the testing team does not work in tandem with the development team. Hence, they can look at the software product through the shoes of customer and evaluate the product to ensure sound product development. Black box testing is more effective for large and complex applications. Then we have black box testing allows to identify defects in early stages of the product life cycle. Finally, we have this phase of software development life cycle ensures that quality product reaches to the client and eventually the end customer. There are few downsides to the black box testing as well. So let's glance through them quickly as well. Without any technical or programming knowledge, there are chances of ignoring possible conditions of the scenario to be tested. The second disadvantage we have is in a stipulated time, there is possibility of testing less and skipping all possible inputs and their output testing. Yet another important downside of black box testing is Complete test coverage is not possible for large and complex projects. That's all we have for this session. I hope the concept covered in this video is clear to all of you guys out there. If you have any doubts, please put them in the comment box below and our 24 by 7 team of experts will answer them for you. Until next time, thank you and hit that subscribe button to stay put with IntelliPath YouTube channel. Just a quick info guys. If you wish to learn testing and make a career in it, then we have a good news for you. IntelliPad provides Test Architect Master course in collaboration with IBM and Microsoft. The course link of which is given in the description below.